Igor Mihalovich, I have just noticed that I... The thing is that I trivially confuse who am I. And as in the example with the chocolate bar, which you talked about, well, in fact, it's not even me who is eating the chocolate bar. Of course, not you. But the habit. But the habit is since childhood. Well, watching programs with your participation, reading the Alatra book, all that give a response at the level of feelings and really practices, they... Well, I cannot say that there is no spiritual, because I feel and... But you can't say there is spiritual, because you don't know. But during the day, well, during the day I simply confused where am I and where is consciousness. And because of this, I kind of transmit its will. And it lives. But after all, in fact, that's that's simple. Because even, it's not even me who is working. I'm not the programmer. It is consciousness, the programmer. Well, the question is, who am I? And... And do you know what the funniest thing is? The funniest thing is to hear this from a person who is involved in programming. And you said the key phrase, it is not I who lives. Yes, meaning you're not living at this time. And what's the point? The point is just that if a person really has a desire to live, he lives. I mean, to live spiritually, spiritually free, if this is his main goal. And when a person has a multitude of dominant desires, well, due to certain circumstances of life and the like, there are desires that are intrusive, that dominate in the head for a much longer time, meaning a person cannot make his consciousness even think about the spiritual, or is compelled to force it. That's when this happens. Do you understand? But in fact, everything is very simple. When you put the power of attention into work, you are focused on this work, you are integrated into consciousness, and the personality ceases to identify itself as a personality. Why? Because it got used to this since childhood. And in this you are right, and it wants the chocolate. But again, who wants? Consciousness. Consciousness. What does the personality, for example, need your chocolate for, right? Or candy? Of course it does not. It does not need anything material. That's the point. But when a person lives spiritually and really strives for it, for real freedom, the one which people have struggled for since time immemorial, after all, everyone is fighting for freedom. Well, what do they achieve by changing one dictator for another? Nothing. Any freedom in a society is an illusion. True freedom is the freedom in spiritual sense, when a person really gains it. And that's exactly where life begins, right? Meaning that which does not have time and it does not end, and it has to be constant. And well, thanks to certain practices, efforts, studies and the like, working on oneself, prayers, those same grains in any religion, say, no matter what religion a person is in, there are a lot of grains on how to really find it all. But there is a lot of chaff which led astray to the opposite side. But if a person wants to live, if he has experienced, felt that he is a personality, he just must not lose it. It should be like that all the time, whatever you do. Observe how your consciousness works, what it is doing, and so on. But if you observe secondary consciousness with the help of primary consciousness, well, it is better, of course, than nothing. But primary consciousness easily substitutes the personality at this stage of observation, making it manipulate. Well, this can be easily differentiated too. I will put it simpler. Life is, first and foremost, love. It is filling up with true, genuine love. But the concepts of love, even for people, it is a big difference. It's not a secret, but people do not know what love is. What we call love is attachment, it's manipulation, it's the convenience of survival, it's comfort. Well, call it whatever you want, but this can't be called love. Love is the ultimate understanding, it is that. But the words end on how to describe it, what love is. Love is when there is happiness, inner happiness, it's real life, it's freedom. We can associate love, it is happiness with internal freedom, an immense one. It is that which erases all boundaries and eliminates all fears. Then there can be neither fear of death of the body nor anything else, because the person gains an understanding that he cannot die. But it only comes when, again, when he gets freedom. And he gets freedom only when he, 
His main goal in his life is to find this aspiration. And when he is focused on life, well, so let's say, then he finds it. Meaning, when most of the forces given for the acquisition of life are spent on acquiring life. But if we put all the forces of attention as dictated by our own consciousness, due to our own habit, into a certain work, no matter how complex it may be, of course we forget about ourselves, we become, we move around. That is, again, quantum laws work here. And we just substitute ourselves. We substitute ourselves for consciousness, and we already become one of the actors in our head, no more, who enter into a dispute with themselves, and there is already no differentiation, but inside it is empty. And this is inner unity, it is the inner content and the integrity, say spiritually, it is precisely that love, that internal freedom, it is what gives this life and it cannot disappear anywhere, whatever you do. No matter how hard a person's life is, no matter how much pain and suffering he experiences, the personality, it is free, it has nothing to do with the body. It's like a bird in a cage. Well, this is so there is understanding, but that's when you gain this. But in order for this to happen, you have to get there. You need to gain this freedom. And can we say that this is the same as like a certain number of years? We developed a habit of living by consciousness, that the same way we can, observing ourselves, observing... Develop a habit to live? Yes. No, there can't be a habit of living, it's a need. But this must be realized, that the personality has this need. Well, consciousness does everything so that you do not understand that personality is striving for life. It should develop in the same way as everything else, that is, I mean, the personality itself. Adapt to that same freedom and, of course, learn how to properly distribute the power of attention. Let's say it simply. So this means that without such a primary awareness of this need, of the real, there will be no… Honesty. Everything begins with honesty. With honesty towards yourself. You can lie to anyone, a friend, a mate. You will describe yourself as whatever you want to be, but not who you actually are. But with yourself, you must be absolutely honest at every stage. If you are too lazy to write down your observations, admit that you are a lazy person, that you do not want anything, and that you are now engaged in foolishness. And here, consciousness is pressuring that the subsequent state, this is not fears, not intimidation, it is reality. A sub-personality is inevitable after death, if a person is not liberated spiritually. They really exist. You can conduct a lot of experiments and tests, well, no need to even go far, to observe and listen to what people are experiencing say, who have experienced clinical death. Well, here everything may be analyzed, and from the position of science it can be easily proved, you see. It's inevitable. And here you should think what you want in the future. What is your choice? An instant gratification by a chocolate or something greater? You see, here is a substitution, a substitution of values, and the most important values, life-defining values. Reality is substituted by an illusion, that's the whole point here. Meaning, true love is replaced by such substitutes, and sugar is substituted by God knows what. Well, you see how much it does not fit in. Well, it's even hard to express in order to explain this all here. Do you understand? That love, that life which a person finds, and to exchange it here for something. Well, there is nothing which it can be exchanged for, really nothing. All the rest, well, it's values imposed by consciousness. You see? Well, ground-sounding values, maybe they are heroic and the like, or are associated with responsibility, with something else, but these are all false values. A person can have nothing here and he cannot possess anything that would be much more valuable than real life. Well, even when a person experiences in practices, whether it is prayerful ones, meditative or religious, it does not matter. But when a person encounters, and people often face this divine spiritual manifestation with a droplet of alert, 
He experiences that which penetrates, as they say, to the depth of the soul. But can anything in this world produce a similar experience? Here, even such a small experience, it shows how everything is worthless in the material world in comparison with the spiritual world. But a person, after all, without any experience, he is just this... You know, this is when there is a strong wind, there's a wave, and you are far, far away from the shore, but a drop from the ocean has hit you. Well, I would compare like that. And you have an opportunity to settle in this ocean and become a part of this ocean. And to reject this, to exchange for the mortal, it's hard to understand. It's like people doom themselves to such existence here. Well, let's say like some, as a consequence of trauma or illness, get to a point where they're immobilized, consciousness works, and you cannot even move an eye. Do you understand? Whereas consciousness is working, you hear everything, you perceive everything, but your body does not obey. Well, imagine this state. We once talked about organizing and making this kind of a video to talk with those people who came out of these conditions, like after a stroke or those who have been in a coma so that people understand a little how hard it is. And this is somewhere close to the state of subpersonality, meaning there is freedom of consciousness, but there is enormous helplessness, while emotions are all preserved. Everything that is there in everyday life is preserved, only the body does not obey. And desires, everything remains. That very pressure, say, aggressive from that same consciousness, it remains. And to exchange happiness, eternity for elusiveness? It is hard to express this. Let's have another question. Let's drop this topic, it is said.